If you don't raise my budget, I'm gonna be your sugar daddy. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. What did you say? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even have sugar daddy capabilities, right? Aren't you a B? <laughs> of course you are, right? I'm just saying, if you don't give me money, I'm gonna go. I don't know. So you're not gonna do any of that. You're just gonna raise your budget. Your budget's fine. I'm gonna be an ambassador for the meat industry. God is watching you. He hears you. I mean, that means I'm your higher self hears you. You know what the you said is bad. You're not gonna do that. You're just I'm talking. Kidding, Where's that boyfriend of yours? Is he still around? Yeah, he's not. He's in. He's hiking right now. Watch if it. you don't raise my budget, I'm gonna. So hello everyone once again and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chinyer of Gillette Style Glam. If this is your first time here with me, thank you so much for being here. And if you already subscribed to my channel, you're so welcome. Um, so first of all, let me start by apologizing for my absence. Um, no matter what, um, if you remember my, call la my last video, I talked to you guys about the fact that something was going on with my, in my home, in my family. Um, then on top of that, I fell sick, you know, <laughs> the, the truth is I, I fell, I fell ill. Um, and, um, coupled with that, the kids, um, were leaving on spring break. And so I had actually forgotten that, you know, there was a load of things to prepare for them to leave, um, uh, before they left. And so coupled with uh, health, you know, and, you know, kids and then trying to, you know, be abreast with the situation back home. It was a lot of things, but we keep moving. Thank you so much for your patience, um, with me. Um, before I go further, I want to say, um, happy Easter to you guys. I know <laughs> I feel like I missed you people. I won't lie to you. I missed you all. I feel like a part of me, Ha, you know, was not complete the fact that I wasn't here. And I just realized how much, you know, I really, really enjoy being in front of you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, why are we here today? Listen, I had a, I had planned a whole lot of videos for you guys, you know, um, but <laughs> You see, life happens, and that's always one of the things I keep saying. Life happens. Anyway, um, so before I continue, my outfits that you're wearing, you're seeing me with. Remember, I told you in my videos that I usually have my outfits made, and so this is one of them, you know. And this is one of the outfits. I think I've talked about this one before that I was going to wear it on one of these days, and it was made for me um, and sent to me over. Uh, by my couturier and designer in Nigeria. Yay! One of some of the perks of being Nigerian. Gosh, right now I'm actually looking for a couturier, you know, in the abroad. I wouldn't mind if you guys know any, let me know. Anyway, so why are we here? My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, hmm. Omo, Aoki Simmons, Aoki Lee Simmons is dating a 65 year old man his name is vittorio he <laughs> got a long walk um, <laughs> um i just need to get his name right because i have so many things to say um just a second So she's dating Vittorio Asaf. Now, Vittorio Asaf is 65 years old and he is the same age as Aoki's dad. That is Russell Simmons. Okay, so she's Russell Simmons' daughter. Now, if you don't know who Aoki is, Aoki is the second daughter um, of Russell Simmons, whom he had with kimora if you recall in the 90s kimora was a supermodel who was discovered you know while she was in high school and russell simmons if you guys know the backstory russell simmons um you know was enamored by her 
and you know um, it became a love story now if you recall kimura started this um her career as um a model at the age of 15 and i think i've watched some of her documentaries at that period of her life and i think she got into the relationship with russell allegedly at 17 i'm not too sure but so i'm going to use allegedly here now when i saw this story in all honesty the first thing that i said was she's learning from her father she learned from her father and I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to also go into a lot other details of what my thought process has been in this, um, in this, uh, um, thing. Now, uh, so the first thing, like I said, the first thing I said was, um, oh, she'd learned from her father. And then the second thing I also said was, oh, she's learning from her mother. And then another thing that, um, that occurred to me was, um, that the fact that she wants to make her dad, this is a cry. She, this is an attention seeking act because she wants her dad to notice. Now, why I say this is because there has been a video where she was speaking with her dad and she kind of threw it out there about her dad increasing her, um, you know, her pocket money okay um for her and she said something in the corridors of i'm going to put the video right and she said something in the corridors of, if you don't increase my if you don't increase my allowance then i'm going to go ahead and get myself a sugar daddy watch if you don't raise my budget i'm gonna get a sugar daddy i'm kidding i'm sorry i'm kidding what did you say <laughs> nothing okay <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even have sugar daddy capabilities right aren't you a b <laughs> Of course you are, right? I'm just saying, if you don't give me money, I'm gonna go. I don't know. So you're not gonna do any of that. You're just gonna raise your budget. Your budget's fine. I'm gonna be an ambassador for the meat industry. God is watching you. He hears you. I'm I mean, good. I mean, what? your higher self hears you. You know what the, you said is bad. You're not gonna do that. You're just I'm talking. Kidding, God. Where's that boyfriend of yours? Is he still around? Yeah, he's not. He's in. He's hiking right now. Watch if it. you don't raise my budget, I'm gonna. Her dad asking her in that video. I recall her dad asking her to repeat herself and she didn't go there again. And then um, he said something about, "I hope the V is still there." Anyway, I, you know, in that video, one could look at it as father-daughter banter. Okay, for what it was at the time. But seeing what is going on now, um, I would say, well, she, she's, she's seeking her dad's attention. That's what she wants. And so I'm going to address Russell, first of all. Now, dear Russell Simmons, I'm sure, you know, again, I just want to say one thing. No one has the blueprint on parenting. You know, no one has the blueprint. And so I'm going to say this, Russell at the moment is embroiled in a lot of charges that border on um, sexual harassment, assault, and what have you. And I'm sure for him, this is something he would not want to show or come out on the tabloids. That said, you see, our children learn from the things we do. It's all also common knowledge that this is a man who was way older than Kimora at the time he wifed her up and she had those two kids for him. Okay. And so we see, you see, most times people, we don't understand how strong patterns can be. Okay. And many times we think, well, they're adults, they're kids. They don't know any better. Sometimes there are things that your children may not have seen, but because there's a pattern to it. Okay. It will show. And I don't know how or why, but it just exists. I will tell you a story. And this was me personally. Now, um, I was growing up, I was sexually abused. I've said that story, but not on YouTube. The story is somewhere. It's on my Facebook page. Um, and I, I told that story in the wake of um, the incident that a pastor raped a girl in Nigeria at the time. 
And I remember I was talking to my therapist here about, because my doctor, I spoke with very frankly with my doctor, because there were times when I was just not there. My husband is quite aware of this. And so I recall, I spoke with my doctor and my doctor referred me to a therapist. And I recall one of the things she asked me was, um, when you feel when you feel this way do you want to drink and i said yes and let me tell you why and i was so affirmative in that yes because something actually happened to me on this fateful day i was at home and in the past we would buy drinks at home you know so we always had the bar was you know we always had we had a bar and we had all, we always had drinks you know in in the in the in the house and one of my favorite drinks at the time was jack daniels and so my da- my husband got this big bottle of jack daniels and I recall on this day, I was in front of my computer and I was working, supposedly. I was supposed to be working. Now, the reason she asked that question was because there had been, um, there was an incident of alcoholism in my home, in my family. And so, which I, we, didn't wit- we didn't witness as kids, but we saw traces. And so... When she asked that question, I was very, very, very open. And I said, yes. And so on this day, I was supposed, and mind you, I had been taking this this drink. And on this day, you know, and it wasn't like I was taking it regularly. But on this particular day, this particular day, I got the, the bottle. I brought out the bottle and it was still pretty full. And I had it by my side. And while I was supposed to be on the computer, I was pouring and drinking, pouring and drinking. Now, there was something I noticed while I was drinking. I felt good. I felt so good. And while I was doing what I was doing, I looked and, you know, I, when I put my bottle, my, you know, because I wasn't watching. So I would just pour and drink. I will just, you know, when, once it finished, I'll pour and drink. And so this time I poured and, you know, believing that there was still something in the bottle, I put up my cup and there was nothing in. Hmm. And I picked up the phone to call my husband to buy another bottle of Jack Daniels. So I had downed one, um, I think how the big, the, the, the big size that kind of, I don't know how, what, how many liters that is. I just downed it sitting down and just as I made to call my husband a voice the spirit in my spirit said to me stop you and again I, I've, I've never been drunk in my life <laughs> yeah I've never and so something my spirit told me stop don't call your husband do you understand what you just did You just finished a bottle of Jack. And what that the Spirit told me at that time was, if you take another bottle, you're on your way to becoming a drunk. You are following a pattern. I, I, I am not lying, guys. This happened to me. And why this happened to me was because I was alone. I was alone, so I was able to focus and understand how the spirit was speaking to me at that time. And I pulled back. I put down the phone. My husband had picked. I said, don't worry. I cut the phone. And then I looked at the bottle of Jack Daniels. I will tell you guys, I was standing. There was nothing wrong with me. I was okay. I knew I, I was not drunk. I have never been drunk. I've never thrown up before because I drank too much. Never. And that was the day I said to myself, I'm done. And so on that day, when my husband got back, I was very, very, I told him the truth. I said, this is what happened to me today. I said, please 
from today go onwards. No liquor in this house. There will be no storage of liquor. And that was the beginning of the removal of everything called drinks, alcoholic drinks in this home. Patterns happen in such a way that most times you may not even notice they're happening. Like I said, I'd never been drunk before. I was, I, I could go to a party, drink, and I'll come back. And the funny thing was that the time I was drinking was when I was more alert. Yeah, that's story for another day. And so when you realize this kind of things, you just realize that children, whether no matter how young or how baby or how much of a baby you think they are or that they did not see, it's very, 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 very possible that they follow patterns. Again, we'll talk about first, second generation, third generation addiction. Yeah. Falling into it is the problem. If you're able to get yourself at the nick of time, you could realize what is happening to you and pull back. And so I told this story to my therapist and my doctor. And she looked at me and she said, that's amazing. And it has been, I would say, a successful journey till today. Now, I've, I've seen Kimora. This is now in Kimora's um, area. I've seen Kimora. I've watched her. I remember when she used to do her, she had her reality TV show and she has come off as this strong, you know, put together woman who has been very, very pro her children, you know, and I love it. I love that about her, that being a mom did not define, you know, her her success, it was about Kimora Lee Simmons. But again, we have seen Kimora move from marriage to marriage. Personally, I felt that she went, she did all those things because she wanted more kids, not necessarily because um, she was philandering. No, I just felt like she wanted more kids and she wanted a meaningful um, sense of relationship to those children. And so all the men who have, who had come into her life were in her life as husbands and whom she married and then had children for that said, remember that our kids watch what we do again, patterns, our children see our children watch our children are learning. Some of them could learn and understand, well, this is how mom wants to live her life, or this is how dad wants to live his life. Well, I'm far away from this lifestyle. And some kids will be like, well, this is what I saw. This is what I knew. And so they will just follow the same lines. You see, and the choice and the decision to be able to be a world, you know, to be your own world different from what you saw that you may not have known at the time if it was right or wrong. That is what we see here. And so I would say to Russell, and I will say to Kimora, go fetch your kids. Go fetch your daughter, because this is very unhealthy. This is not okay. So go fetch them. Go look for her. Bring her home and let there be some good speaking to. I do not subscribe to kids trying to blackmail their children. Again, I'm Nigerian. <laughs> and if you know anything about the Nigerian parental guidance, 101, that thing that you claim you want to do <laughs> and they find out, know that you are going to be, hmm, what will happen to you? The Amadio Ha cannot save you. That is, if you are aware of how it functions, where we come from. Where I come from, I will tell you guys categorically, parenting hmm, is a, it's a world on its own. So I would say that at this point, that Russell and Kimora, go get your daughter Aoki and let there be some serious talking to. The fact that your daughter is 21 doesn't make her necessarily make her an adult. I'm going to say this and I will keep repeating this. You don't become an adult until you're 30. 
And by God, if someone had told me this when I turned 18, I would probably have rebelled, but at the same time, I would look, I would, it would be something, because you know, there's some certain language you tell children, it doesn't depart from them. It keeps going on in their minds and in their brains. And be, then one day it makes sense. You, you don't become an adult until you get to 30. And so what, what happens is that, you know, the ages of 18 to 25, that is when you're actually discovering the world. That is actually when you're discovering who you are. That is actually when you are going to be making mistakes. We pray that the mistakes you're making are not mistakes that can cost you in the long run. At 30, you're grounded. At that point, there are certain things that you don't care about anymore. You look at that, those age, I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? Yes. And so that is why I say what I say. She's 21. She's still a child. She's, I'm, I'm 45. She could be my daughter. She is my daughter. And so I would pull her ears and come home. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. Because this is my maternal instinct speaking. So Russell and Kimora, go get your child. And let there be some serious talking to going on right there. And on this note, guys, this is where I'm going to end this video. Do not fail to like. Do not fail to share. Do not fail to comment. And do not fail to um, follow me. Subscribe to my channel and all on my social media networks. It's Jules Style Glam. Twitter is Jules Style. And TikTok, it's also Jules Style Glam. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.